Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the how to prioritize like a top performer webinar. Uh, just to make sure that everybody can hear me. Say hi, hello, say where you're from. Hello, Adrian and Paul and Farid and Al. Hey, Alina, Dean, Portugal for the win. Miami's great. Denver, Pronto, Puerto Rico, Spain, Israel, Toronto. This is a very international settings here. I'm very excited to see you all. Kenya, Canada, Norway, South Africa. That's very cool, guys. Very cool. Uh, we're going to wait a few more seconds to see if like more people join. You know, not everybody can are always like on the minute, but we're going to start in a few seconds uh, with today's webinar. Ukraine, Costa Rica, Tampa, Tucson. That's amazing. Hey, Lisa. Hey, I see. Hey, Milton. So great to see everybody here. Cool. So um, my name is Roy Povarczyk. I'm head of growth at Anydu. And with me, silently but effective, uh, is surely our head of customer success. Uh, she'll be jumping in back and forth on chat with you guys. So if you have questions, uh, you can ask. And uh, if it's technical stuff, surely can mostly kind of direct you to the right links, answer your questions and help. And I'll try to answer as many questions as I can also throughout the webinar. Um, so we'll try kind of to combine here from the UK. Um, so thank you so much, Shirley, for helping me out on the webinar. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. If you don't know it yet, so this webinar is a part of our Productivity Masters webinar series. Uh, the webinar series where in each webinar we go over a different productivity method. We go uh, around different topics that can help you be more productive, uh, get more out of your day, and achieve more, uh, and help you design the life that you uh, want to achieve. So this is a part of our presentation. If you're hearing um, uh, the dog bark, that's Julie, my dog. Um, so she's also a guest on this webinar, I guess. Uh, so uh, we'll soon upload the rest of the webinar series if you've missed previous webinars. So we're going to upload them, I guess, uh, to YouTube or a dedicated page. You're all going to get an email with that. Um, so let's and before, of course, sorry, before we start, uh, if you haven't grabbed it already, uh, we have a special limited time offer for any do premium on our early uh, on, on our early tier. You can get it right now for twenty nine ninety nine uh, instead of twenty five ninety nine. So if you haven't already, um, if you haven't already, it's a great time to uh, to grab that special offer. Cool. So today we are here to talk about how to prioritize like a top performer. Now, uh, prior, uh, prioritization, you know, in, the, in its definition, it's, uh, it's the action of, or process of deciding the relative importance or urgency of a thing or things, right? So basically the way I see this, uh, prioritization is nearly the difference between, you know, having a massive success sometimes and huge failure, stress, and feeling overwhelmed. So uh, you, we can easily see it here, right? This list is of tasks, you know, from cleaning my desk to paint the house, call the bank, plan birthday party. There's so many tasks here that if I just need to think about doing them, it's kind of overwhelming, right? I'm looking at this, I don't know where to start. And my biggest problem here is that's a long list. Am I doing everything in one day? How am I doing this? How, how do I even approach such a list? And this is where prioritization comes into place because it turns a list that is so crazy overwhelming uh, to something that feels very doable. Uh, yeah, Ronaldin, the, the presentation has started. So it basically turns you know, this overwhelming list, which you just don't know where to start, into you know into something that you feel you can actually manage and this is you know once you have the things that you chose to have instead you know that you choose to do that, that day right that's where things get easier and easier to do so if i'm looking at a massive list i don't know where to start and this thing sounds very overwhelming but if i choose 
if I choose to start, you know, by my tasks and, and kind of emphasize that I want to clean my desk today, just finish the productivity methods post that we're working on. I want to call John, email Sally back, or wish Mike a happy birthday, you know, pay my bills, call mom, or finish my any webinar, right? So all these things are doable. When I see them as this short list, everything is very, very doable. Uh, forgive for a second so for some technical difficulty. Issue here. Can you all hear me okay? Good. Okay, so let's continue. So let's start with the side effects of not prioritizing. Not, you know, not prioritizing your uh, your tasks and to-dos. Now, let's start with the with the cold fact. Uh, so let's start with the cold fact that prioritization is hard. Now, why? Is prioritizing uh, so hard? What makes it hard for us? Number one, we are forced to choose between things that we love, right? So suddenly we see, um, yeah, there's going to be a Q&A session at the end. There's going to be time for questions. And also, if you have questions, you can also ask them, and I'll be happy to try and answer as I go along. So um, I see some people have some uh, technical difficulties. Usually, you can just refresh uh, the page and it will work itself out. So you can also do that. So why is prioritization so hard? Number one is, is because once we face a list of all the things you know we want to do, our to-do list eventually is a list of all the things we want to achieve, need to achieve, want to do. So number one, you know, sometimes we have to choose between things that we love. And you know, if you do one thing, it means that you're not doing the other thing. And choosing between things you love is hard. Uh, next, you have to choose between things that we just actually want to do, right? I might want to do, I don't know, maybe I want to take my daughter to the park, but I also want to read a book, and I have only two hours or one hour a day, and I have to choose between, you know, between those two things that I want to do. It's hard to decide one upon the other. Next is that it actually forces us to face unpleasant tasks. Um, so, you know, sometimes there are tasks that we don't want to do. It might be, you know, writing an essay for school. It might be, you know, paying the bills. It might be just doing a chore that you don't like doing. And when you have to face it when you're priori prioritizing it, then you are basically, you have to face it. And you have to understand that today I'm choosing to do something I really don't like doing. And, you know, it's hard to make that choice and, and you know, and basically put that in your list. So we prioritize, so we try to avoid prioritizing it. And eventually, the hardest thing uh, with the process of prioritizing is that you face reality. Once you finish, you know, your, uh, your process for the day and you look at the checklist or, you know, the, the to-do list that you have in front of you, you now know that these are the things that you're going to achieve today. And, you know, before we actually plan out our day, we can sometimes fantasize and we get so much more done than we can actually get done you know it's like uh i think it's equivalent to you know when you go to a vacation for like a two days and you take like five books that you think now i'm going to have time to read and you actually forget you only have two days and you know sometimes you look at the, your to-do list and you understand that once you prioritize when and once you look at this right there's not like you're only going to get three big tasks done today i'm sorry there's, there's i'm i'm sorry there's not technical difficulty i'll be right back Small technical issue. I hope it's solved now. Can you hear me? Okay, good, good, good. I'm sorry. This was the last time, I hope, and everything is sorted out right now. So uh, so this is why it's so hard to prioritize because at the end, you're looking at the list, understanding this is what I'm going to get done today, right? This is it. For the better or worse, sometimes it feels like you're going to do more than you thought. Sometimes you look at it and you feel like, is that the only thing I'll be able to do today? And the truth is, that whether you choose to do this process or not, you have a certain amount of, amount of hours a day, and you're not going to be able to do more tasks than uh, than you can actually, you know, complete in that day. Doesn't matter if you do it or not. 
So prioritization is inevitable. It will happen either way. Your day is going to end and you're going to achieve what you've achieved for that day. The only question is who controls it? So if you don't prioritize, right, what's going to happen is number one, you're going to have an increase in stress. Why? Because the day goes by, you look at a long list of things you've decided you're going to do or you haven't decided, you just have that long list and you're just trying to make it done, right? Just trying to, to go and do task by task and you see that the day goes by, you're not going to be able to do it. And once your day is about to end, you suddenly see a task, which is like, a, I don't know, make a huge project by tomorrow. And now it's already too late and you haven't done that project. Why? Because you were doing other things randomly, right? So you're, you're constantly stressed because, uh, because you have too much to do and you feel like you don't know when you're going to do it or that you'll never be able to achieve it. Number two, if you don't prioritize, there's a low chance of success. Why? Because you'll be doing the wrong things. There's so many things you can do a day. The question is, are you doing the right thing? Not just like, are you getting tons of things done, but are you getting the right things done? Um, number three, you're always going to have tasks that will just never get done. You know, some tasks are, are at the bottom of the list. Some tasks you just don't like doing. You're, you're kind of pushing them day to day. And every time you get reminded you have to do them, it's already too late or or you just don't have time for that day and some things will just never get done. Uh, you're going to overwork yourself. Why? Because you're doing as much as you can instead of doing the right things. So you're always going to look at this long list and you'll never understand what actually makes the most impact. And when you don't focus on what makes the most impact but try to do as many tasks as possible, you're always going to overwork yourself because you're, you might be ending up doing a lot of things that don't create the impact that you want and you just add more and more tasks because you wouldn't understand that you're just getting busier but not more effective. Um, Adrian, I see, I believe the hardest thing in prioritization is motivation and that's what leads to people not prioritizing. So I agree that the question is like, why do we lack the motivation? So as I said before, you know, you're facing, you have to choose between things you really want to do. You have to choose between things or face things you really don't want to do. Um, but the hard truth is that eventually the things that we need to do are just the things that we need to do. And we'll like eventually end up doing them anyway. So once you take the, once you take the time to prioritize, you number one, also like understand the impact of the things that you chose to do. Right, And you'll be able to control your life because even if you have to do things you don't want to do or you're low motivated in doing them, right? once you prioritize them, you can decide when to tackle them. You gain control over them. So if you don't prioritize, you end up not owning your life because you'll be chasing the tasks other people give you. You don't know what it's, what's important and what's not. You'll just be busy all the time. So priority, uh, prioritizing is very, very important if you want to design the life that you want to live and you want to take control. Now, something that is very important that I see uh, that I see coming up in discussions over and over again: uh, efficiency versus productivity. You know, everybody are everybody's talking about being more productive. Now, being productive is I finished everything on my to-do list. So I might have twelve tasks, fifteen tasks, you know, a hundred tasks. I'm super productive. I've got all of them done. Being efficient means I've made progress today, right? So. You shouldn't get confused between the two. Mastering different productivity methods will help you get more done daily, right? You can you can use uh, you know methods we've we've done in our previous webinars or uh, any kinds of productivity method you re you read about in blog posts or books, and it will actually make you or help you achieve and do more daily, right? But it shouldn't be confused with working on the right things daily, right? That's how you get to this. Uh, uh, position where doing less can be more. So instead, you know, once I decide on doing the things that have the most impact and make me more efficient, right, then I can actually say, okay, if I do these three things today, I'm going to make major progress in my project. If I do these other 15 things, right, I'm going to, I'm not going to move an inch or I'm going to move an inch and I'm going to work 20 hours a day to do it, right? So you really have to think about uh, am I working on the right things and am I prioritizing the right things? This is super, super crucial uh, for you to actually make progress. You know, a lot of these productivity methods, the problem with them is that you, you do everything they say, right? Uh, you move forward and you do everything you say, uh, but you, the, your projects don't get done, right? 
Like you don't make progress in what you want to get, you don't achieve your goal. So prioritization is at the heart of every successful productivity framework execution, right? Whichever productivity method you go for, is it GTD, right, like getting things done, uh, you know, the checklist manifest, whatever you choose, what, right? At the heart of it, eventually you'll end up looking at your long to-do list, right? And even when you want to put it through that process, you have to, you have to ask yourself, which of this list of items am I going to execute on? So prioritization is at the heart of every successful productivity framework execution. Now, so we now understand that prioritization is crucial. And we understand that it's hard, but we also understand that it can change our lives. So the question is, how do I prioritize, right? Like, how do I choose? There's so many things I want to do, so many things I need to do, how, uh, so many things, you know, I need to do for work, for, for school, for my family, obligations. How do I manage this crazy list and own my day? So basically, uh, a prioritization framework is kind of a set of questions you should ask yourself every morning. So I'm not going to dig deep into the, into the feature, but this is basically at the heart of any new moment. Uh, you're all any new users, so I'm guessing you already know uh, uh, the moment feature or plan my day feature, as it's also called in the app, which is basically you'll get a list of all the things you have uh, uh, listed for today, and you can choose between you know postponing them, snoozing them for later, uh, or, or doing them, right? So, uh, so basically, this is how you prioritize throughout the day. And what I'm going to teach you now is how to approach prioritization. We're going to talk about four frameworks going from a very big picture to like the very small granular tasks. So number one is OKRs. Number two would be commitment inventory. Number three would be must should want framework. And the fourth would be the Eisenhower metrics. Let's start with OKRs. So these are kind of a big pictures guideline. OKR is a system that will help you align your different efforts around your main goal. So we have different goals. And we have different areas in our lives in which you want to achieve uh, different things. So OKRs are really good at helping us aligning them. So the, the secret behind OKRs is this sentence, I will, right, and the objective you're trying to get as measured by. The idea, right, is you set up an objective, what it is that I'm trying to achieve, and then you, achieve, and then you set up the key results meaning how will I measure uh, that I've achieved it? So let's take an example. Let's say that my objective is to live a healthier lifestyle. What's the key results? Like, what am I expecting? So for me, it will be do intermittent fasting for 30 days, six times a year, go to the gym three times a week, or run 20 miles by the end of 2021. Those are the things that I will achieve that will indicate that I've achieved my uh, objective, that I've reached my goal, right? These are the key results that if I get to them, it will indicate that I'm moving forward my objective, living a healthier lifestyle. Another example can be uh, improving my personal relationships. So the three things that if I achieve them, right, will show me uh, or, or will prove me that I've, that I've reached my objective will be eat lunch with a friend once a week, or maybe talk to five friends on the phone uh, once a week, right? Like, like having five phone calls uh, every week. Or maybe making sure that in 2021, I'll have two friends vacation, meaning that I'm going to a vacation uh, with friends. Now, the reason this is so important, right? Because you wanna choose three or four areas in your life and have your objectives around those, right? And you wanna define them with measurable goals. Now, you, you want to make sure that you don't spread yourself too thin, because even if you go back to our examples, right, eat lunch with a, friends one, a friend one a week, once a week, or talk to five friends on the phone a week, or two friends, because they all take time, right? So reaching your objective will take time out of your day and your schedule, and it's going to impact how you prioritize your things, right? Because once you've set up those objectives and your uh, uh, key results, right? You can let them guide your priorities. So if, for example, if it's Sunday and I haven't set up a lunch with any of my friends for that week and I have this as part of my 
uh, key results, right, for my objective of, you know, uh, improving the relationships in my life, right, then I know I need to prioritize this uh, uh, the, to make the phone call or to schedule so I can actually progress with my yearly goal. Do you have any questions about this, uh, the OKR framework? This is a big picture framework. Uh, the idea is, you know, by setting up your goals, you understand what are the things you want to achieve and how they look like in a measurable way. And then you kind of reverse engineer them into actionable tasks. Um, the next framework, which I think is, is life changing, is, is the commitment inventory. In other, in other words, what should I say no to? So it's easy to get lost. We set our goals, but fast enough we find ourselves distracted. Um, we find ourselves distracted. So we have goals, but we find ourselves, you know, things, saying yes to things we shouldn't have said yes to, right? Somebody asks us for our help or a meeting and we say yes just because we want to be nice. Um, you know, we keep daily habits that don't help us progress. You know, going through your Facebook feed, you know, uh, spending too much time on the phone with friends. Uh, and then we have this, uh, what I call invisible commitments. Invisible commitments uh, are basically commitments that you don't realize you've accepted into your life and they take precious time, right? So for example, when your neighbor asks you, hey, uh, I need to have a package delivered to my house today, uh, later will you be at home? And you say, yes, you're now bound to being at home in an hour that you might have not want to be there, right? But or maybe you didn't want to do it. But now you have this commitment that you've invited into your life. And you know you didn't want to, but now it's there. Um, we have all these small things that we agree to help, like a two minutes help, five minutes help, you know. And eventually your day goes by, uh, you know, between the small tasks that you've agreed of doing and the context switching, right? So we all have uh, uh, so many commitments that we commit to that are not helping us progress, right? And once we've set up uh, the goals and our OKRs and where we want to get by the end of the year or by the end of the, you know, the three months or whatever time period you've decided, everything that is not aligned to it, right, is basically a distraction. Um, it's basically a distraction, right? And and so you can, and of course you can, and you will always allow some distractions into your life, but you have to be aware of what they are. You have to be aware of when you, you let them in, right? So you can manage them. What happens to most people, and you know what? You can even do it by yourself. If you go now to your calendar for, for you know, the following week and ask yourself, which of these things I don't want to do or I don't need to do, you will see that you, like, you clear up at least three, four hours for that week. Right. Uh, one of a good, a good buddy of mine, uh, Noah Keegan from Upsumo, uh, from Sumo.com. So he does this thing every once in a while that he will go into his calendar and he will look at the meetings that he have in the following week or months, and he will ask himself, "Do I want to do it? Do I need to do it?" And he will just cancel the meetings that he doesn't have to do, or he decide like, "No, I don't want to do them," and clears up so much of the time uh, that he spends on it. So how do you uh, work with the commitment inventory? Number one, create a list of all your current commitments. Mason, uh, try and refresh. Sometimes, you know, the platform gets stuck. Um, so number one, you create a list of all the current commitments. Remember this list from the beginning, right? So this is like all the things that I've listed out that I need to do. So some of these things I might not want to do, I might want to delegate, delegate I, you know, some of these things might be useless for me, or I just don't, I, like, I, I committed to them, but I don't want to do them. So for example, like, I, why do I need to update my LinkedIn? Maybe I don't have to do it at all, and I can get rid of it, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? Maybe I don't want to bake a cake, the cake for the birthday, and I can buy one, or I can delegate to somebody else. Um, so I want to create this list, and then what I want to do is that I want to uh, categorize uh, my to-dos into bulks, right? So, um, Brooke, 100%. Um, so the list should be for, well, you, well this, the, this example is like from a complete to-do list, you know, but what you have to do slowly and you'll see it through the process is that you, you categorize all your to-dos. 
So for example, I took all the things that I had from the previous list that we've seen, and I've categorized them at like relationships, you know, which is like a plan a dinner with friends, the bake a cake thing, personal administration, call the bank, paint the house, dry cleaning, etc. you know, personal growth, uh, work administration. I've, I've put them all in categories. The next step, right, is that I want to take a look at this list and I want to ask myself how much energy or time am I willing or planning to spend on each one of these categories, right? So personal administration is important, but am I willing to spend four hours or three hours of this a week? Yes or no? Maybe it's too much. Uh, relationships, I want to improve my relationships, but can I spend 10 hours a week, you know, just kind of trying to ping people, speak with like new, new people, time my relationships? I don't know. So I have to look at the categories and decide how much time, energy, you know, percentage of my week do I want to spend in each category? And then, and then the next thing that I would want to do is I want to trim the tasks within the categories to fit my goals. So if I decide that, that I have five hours this week for personal relationships, so I want to go and look at all the lists that are under a personal relationship, all the items that I've, that I've you know, put under this category, the relationships one, and I want to ask myself, okay, if I only have five hours to do that, what am I not doing this week? What am I canceling? What am I saying no to? Right? So you basically want to make sure that you are spending time where you want to spend time and that you're spending your energy in the places that will progress you towards your goal. And you don't let any, let's say, accidental uh, tasks or energy drainers, you know, take away your attention uh, and make you spread too thin on things you don't care about. Next framework, uh, Jay Shirley's uh, method to keep productive and to keep happy is the must, should, and want. Honestly, this is one of my favorite methods uh, because we have to remind ourselves that to-do lists and being productive is not just about getting as many things done or being as efficient as possible, right? Because productivity and humanity has to have to come to together. You know, and the biggest problem with like the idea of being productive and the different uh, productivity methods, right? It's that it's usually keep your personal preference and joy out of it. And it's about how do I become the most effective? But none of them ever asked, are you happy as you uh, become more effective, right? You might, uh, you know, be productive as a robot and get everything done in time, but are you happy and do you take into consideration your well-being? So the idea behind uh, Jay Shirley's uh, um, must, should, want is very simple. Every morning, you look at your task list. Um, so every morning you look at your task list and you can ask your, you need to ask yourself three things. What must I do to create the most impact today, right? So these are usually what you'll do in the must is the things that you have to do today because they're important, because you know their due date is coming very soon, because that's the, pro the project you're working on. This is something that needs to happen today. Then the next one would be, uh, what should I do to build a better future? So these are the tasks that might not need to happen immediately, but you're doing them to invest in your future in a way, right? So, um, you know, if you're, if you're studying or if you're, I don't know, in college, so maybe sitting down and reading, you know, 10 pages of your book towards your test, even if your test is a month away, maybe that's something that's going to help you build your future. Maybe you want to organize your finances and you don't have to do it today, right? Because it's not urgent. You don't have to do it now. But if you take a moment and you organize your finances, this is going to help you in the future. So this is something you should do, right? And next is what do I want to do? so that I may enjoy today and life more completely. So this is where you kind of sneak up your, the things that you personally enjoy doing. And you make sure that in each day, you have three things that will impact your life in a positive way, right? When I am guessing most of you know this, when you put in your to-do list in place, when you're running around trying to do all the tasks that you have in your list, you finish your day and you're kind of overwhelmed and tired and you kind of remember that you didn't take care of yourself. And I think what's so amazing in this uh, prioritization method is that it forces you to always ask yourself, hey, what would also make me happy? Uh, and, you know, uh, being stressed, being unhappy, you know, over time will cause a burnout. 
So reminding you to ask this question is very, very important. And it keeps a great, great balance between, you know, your work life, your family life, your personal life. Um, and you keep tap, you know, of, of, of the things, uh, you keep tap of the things you need to do. So you also don't miss anything important, but you also remember, um, but, but you also remember to take care of yourself. This is why I love this method so much. The last method we're going to talk about today is the Eisenhower metrics. Uh, I call it the objective, the objective truth. Uh, but that that's uh, the term that I think about it. The reason I call it the objective truth is because it, it forces you to really understand what needs to be done, um, what needs to be done. And, you know, at the beginning of this talk, somebody asked about procrastination and motivation. And for me, this method kind of puts the truth in your face. You know, it has makes you force uh, seriality for, for good and worse. Um, you know, sometimes we have to do the things um, sometimes you have to do things we don't like doing. Sometimes we forget to do things that we must do. And I feel like this framework is a really, really good objective, uh, almost emotionless way to decide uh, on your tasks. And sometimes I think we need to do that. Um, and sometimes we need to do that in order to be able to kind of breach through procrastination and, you know, just face the things that we need to do. Um, so... First, to understand this method, you have to understand uh, two terms, urgent and important. So urgent is everything that needs immediate attention, something that needs to get done right now. And important, it means that the outcome should happen. Um, so this means that the outcome should happen. This is something that's important that would actually happen. And then we have uh, what we call the Eisenhower metrics which as you can see is a cross between not important, important, urgent, and not urgent. So in the first quadrant, we have important and urgent, right? These are the things that you must do. If it's also important, it's important or urgent, you have to do it right now, right? This means that it requires your attention, it deserves your attention, and you have to do it right now. You cannot, uh, you cannot postpone it any, any further. Then we have the things that are important but aren't uh, urgent. These are the things that we can schedule for later. So for example, let's say if I have to pay my bills on the 10th of the month, right, I might not have to do it today. And right now it's, you know, it's something in schedule. It's important, but it's not urgent. It has to get done, but not has to get done today. In a few days from now, right, uh, we're in the, like, I don't know, we're in the 3rd of March, right? So like out of six days from now, it's going to become both urgent and important. Next, at the bottom, we have not important and urgent. These are the things that needs to get done right away, but they're not really important. These are the things that maybe I can delegate. Maybe I can give to somebody else to do them, right? Um, Mason, if you have issues with sound or visual, reload, and it should work fine. Um, and the last one is not important and not urgent. These are the things that usually you should eliminate. I mean, if something, the outcome is not important and you don't have to do it now, then this is a great way to discover all these things that we've discussed in the commitment uh, inventory that you just don't need to get, uh, that you just don't need to get done. So many tasks are just like in your to-do list and they're either irrelevant, they were, you thought they were important and they aren't, uh, or you can just deprioritize them. This is a great way to see which is which. So, for example, as we said, important and urgent. If I have to pay my bills by tomorrow, then paying the bills become urgent and important. I have to do it and I have to do it today. Uh, not urgent, but is important, for example, to schedule date night with your spouse, right? Your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Uh, because it's not, it's something that is important that you do. It might not be urgent to get it done today and you can, you know, do it in later this week, but it's important. But if you don't do it over time, right, then it's going to impact your relationship. So you want, so it's important that it will happen, but it doesn't have to happen today. So, but this is something you can schedule in advance, right? Uh, urgent and not important. Uh, groceries, right? So the task, you know, having food to eat is urgent, right? Uh, but is it important that you do it yourself or is it something that you can, uh, you know, uh, use an online service that sends you your groceries to your house, right? Is there a way to optimize this? So it's urgent, but, it might, but it's not something that is like, uh, uh, might not be as important to go get the groceries by yourself. Um, 
And then, you know, uh, something like sort my downloads folder. I know how about you guys, but I my downloads folder is a mess. And every once in a while, I look at it and I say, I need to organize this folder someday. And and when I, you know when I look at this and I try to put it in the in the board, then I understand like this is a totally useless you know assignment. This is a non-task in a way, right? But if you don't look at it, you know, but if you, but someday, someday, <laughs> Mark, I, I try deleting my downloads. There's so many things there that I need and I just end up deleting them over and over again. So it's a problem, <laughs> um, right? So this is kind of a, of a non-task. But if I sit in my uh, to-do list for the day and someday I just wrote like, organize your downloads folder, I might fall into the misconception that this is actually important. And I might do this instead of, I don't know, answering work emails, instead of spending time, you know, with my significant other. Um, so, you know, once you look at it in the metrics, uh, so you kind of understand that this is like something you can just not do, right? So, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, AnyDo has a built-in feature called AnyDo Moment or Plan Your Day, uh, which for me is really, this is how I start every day because once you have the set of questions you want to ask, might it be the Eisenhower metrics, might it be the must want, uh, must uh, uh, want uh, um, and should list, whichever you do, you know, you start your day with AnyDo Moment and you, and you get a list of all the things you've planned to do today and you get to make this conscious decision of where you are you going to spend your time. Um, so this is why this is one of my favorite features uh, using AnyDo, just because it makes me you know, very conscious about how, how am I gonna spend my time today? What am I gonna do today? And are these the things that I'll be happy if I, if I got done by the end of the day? Will it help me make impact? So I, what I do is that when I go through the list, I ask myself the questions from the frameworks that we've, uh, that we've seen before, that we've just went through, you know, the OKRs, uh, the Eisenhower metrics, the must, should, want, uh, and the commitment inventory. This is a great place, you know, to see the tasks that are just draining your time and energy and you don't need to do them, you can just discard them. This is a great time to understand what you must do today uh, this is a great uh, time to, you know, to kind of see what you can just schedule or delegate. Uh, so this is really, for me, key, a key feature every day because it makes me conscious of where am I going to spend my time today. Uh, and this is crucial because this is the heart of prioritization. Of course, you can always go back after, after you plan your day in moments or uh, and, and the uh, plan my day feature. You can always go back and look at your list for today and reorganize it. Uh, for me, it just really helps me that I have to, you know, every time you click on a task, you see it and you may have to make a conscious decision about it. Uh, so for me, it's a key feature. And I think uh, if you're using any the premium, then this is, this is something you can use unlimited. And if you're using a free version, then you, I think you have uh, only a few of those a month that you can use. So, uh, so any the moment, plan your day, great feature to help you prioritize and stay on top. Uh, of your things for the day. So do you guys have any questions? So for it, um, regarding uh, reading recommendations, there's a lot of interesting books about, you know, um, about productivity and how to prioritize. Um, to be honest, I, I think that sometimes, you know, over reading can, you know, kind of create uh, para, uh, paralysis analysis. The way, the way I, I think you should, I, I would go about it is that I would start, you know, trying one method that I think, uh, that I think is really, really great, or I think that it's going to help me and I'm going to try to implement it. If it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, so, uh, you know, getting things done, I think, is one of the one of the best, you know, productivity methods out there for sure. Um, but you can also, you know, you can also try kind of read blog posts before you go straight ahead to uh, uh, to reading a full book. Uh, Allegra, Eat the Frog is a great, great, great mythology. Shirley wrote an amazing post about it on the end of the blog. I agree. Uh, eat the frog is something that is so kind of, it's not easy emotionally to do, but it's going to set you free. Um, so, yes, do you have, guys have any more questions? I'll be happy to answer.
Uh, what would you recommend to integrate prioritization? Uh, Adrian, can you please expand on that? I'm not sure I got the question right. So Kelly, eat the frog is a, uh, is a, is a really great productivity method, which basically says uh, do the hardest task or the task you least want to do, do it first thing in the day. So, you know, in the morning, look at your to-do list. Uh, so look at your to-do list and, you know, maybe there's something you don't want to do. For example, I hate speaking to my accountant. I don't know why I'm traumatized by it for some reason. I just don't like doing that. So, um, but if I have to do it, I just have to do it. So I'll start by doing that. And what's amazing about, uh, I'm sorry, Gabriel, it's not personal. <laughs> um, um, so it basically means, you know, I'm going to have to do this task today. And if I, if I procrastinate, if I don't do it, it's going to sit on my head. It's going to, you know, be on my shoulders and I'll be stressed about it the whole day. But if I do it early in the morning, right, if I just do it for the first thing, I'll be free for the rest of the day from this, like I'll be mentally free. So that's what, that's what, uh, uh, eat the frog means. It's a great method. Uh, Gabriel, any do moments uh, is available on on the mobile devices for now. Let's see, making sure that I'm not missing any critical question. What rhythm schedule would you recommend to do? Um, so, Maggie, what I would I would combine two things. I would do a weekly review of the tasks that I've got that I got done and kind of estimate did I make the progress that I want to make, and I will prioritize. You know. Not not as high level as I do with OKRs, but I will set up weekly goals of the things that I want to achieve that week. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, the goal can be something that is built out of several tasks, a small project, I, but I would do it once a week and then I would do it also daily uh, because, you know, your day-to-day -day also brings its own kind of needs um, and, and you know, you prioritize and try your best to do them, like all the things that you have to do but you know, your day-to-day -day changes. And it's, for me, I think prioritization is important at the beginning of the day, every day. Uh, I, love, I really like the Pomodoro method. I think it's a great way, uh, you know, for me, I think everybody these days, concentration and staying focused is so, so hard. And, you know, from every time I said like, okay, I'm gonna do this task from start to finish. The next thing that will happen is that I will get up from my desk over and over again. But when I do like the Pomodoro, when I use the timer, uh, I actually, what, what I use that we have on, on any of premium, you have an amazing feature called uh, focus mode, uh, which is set on the same perimeters as, as Pomodoro technique, but it's in, uh, it's in your mobile and it's, uh, uh, it's a great way to stay uh, in focus. So if you're using any of premium, you have focus mode on. Um, so that's basically what I use every time that I really need to tackle task, I need to stay focused. I would do that. I don't use it daily, but I do use it quite often, especially when there's tasks that I need to concentrate for, you know, to kind of get into deep work. I also think that using the Pomodoro technique uh, or focus mode on any do is, is some, it's kind of a muscle and you start at 25 minutes and you increase it more and more. And, and the, you know, the beginning staying focused for 25 minutes is really hard if you're not used to it, but it's kind of a muscle and you get used to it and you can expand that more and more. So I think it's a great method. Um, we will send the slides. Um, let's see. I was going to motivate to pull you together to do this because I suffer. Okay. So Adrian, I have to tell you something, creating a list of all the things you need to do and then prioritizing, right? It's one of those things that, you know, sounds dreadful at the beginning, but it will set you free it will really set you free because you'll be able to see for number one, most of the time when you see all your to do's, you see that the monster is not that bad. And that's number one. And number two, you know, one of the scariest thing about these lists is that when you don't have them written down, you just have it as stress items in your brain. You remember this and then you get reminded you have to do that. And this is what I was talking about at the beginning of not prioritizing that you lose control over your life. If you'll create the list, right, and you'll choose to do the things you need to do when you want and, are, and when you're able to do them, you're going to feel so much better, my friend. You're going to feel very, you're going to feel so much better um, because you're going to have control. You're going to make decisions and you're not going to act out of fear 
um, and overwhelmness. Um, what is my most number one activity tactic that made you the most productive in your life? Well, it's daily reviews and daily prioritization. Literally going over the list of same things saying, okay, if I get these things done today, will I be happy? Like if I get these things done today, uh, like what impact will it make on my life? And, you know, sometimes the best thing about it is that you have something in your list uh, and you understand it's not going to make the impact that you want to get. Um, Uh, good advice for, for morning or night routine. Uh, drink water first thing in the morning. Uh, I, you know, personally, I, I also support journaling. I think it's a great way to reduce stress in the morning. But basically, look at the things you need to do and decide what you're going to do, do today. This is why the uh, must want uh, should list is so great because, you know, you can you can look beyond be like beyond the you know the tasks and you can also see like the perks you're going to add to your day and you can uh actively decide of the uh, and, and you know focus on the things that are going to make your day positive um you know and also it makes your so 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 that uh, you know like the prioritization is such a big deal Uh, for more productivity questions, um, I think I think these four frameworks cover a lot. I would start with them, and you know, and iterate later. But don't look for as don't look for more questions. Start with these four frameworks, and you like it's like ninety percent done. Paul, what what do you mean a fifty fifty situation? Um, what do you, when do you think is a good, the best time to read a good, uh, to read a good pre or post to work? Um, what's the best time to read? It's depending on your energy level. Um, I think it's very important. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's actually a really great idea for, uh, for maybe the next webinar, which is about, you have to really get to know your personal energy levels throughout the day. Some people are most focused and, and, and awake in the morning. Some people are, are more tired and discouraged in the morning, right? So, and, you know, some people have the most energy, you know, going into evening time. Some people are the more tired in that time. So I think you really need to understand your energy level and and make sure you adjust the tasks based on how you feel and your energy if you're most focused in the morning most energy do the hardest things in the morning if in the afternoon you feel more lazy and more tired do like my mundane you know uh brainless tasks you know email stuff you know just doing if you're <laughs> if you decided to organize your downloads uh folder that you know when you're tired that would be the best time to do that um Boris, thank you so much for the feedback. Uh, you're going to get the video recordings and materials in your email tomorrow. Uh, so, Alan, uh, what do you recommend in high traffic of, uh, of daily tasks issue? Do you need immediate attention, leaving high importance, high urgency, preventing scheduled tasks? So, um, <sighs> that's a hard question, Alan. Uh, so customer service is a great example, you know, because what you need to do, it's, it's a great example, but it's also like a more complicated example because you have to take more factors, uh, you know, if everything is in the same priority and same urgent, urgency and same importance, then, you know, it means one of two things. One, you need to scale yourself up as a person, you need help, you know, like more people doing this, or you have to ask yourself, even with this characteristics, how do I prioritize, right? So for, I'll give you an example from, uh, uh, you know, I'll give an example from a company, from one of the, one of the biggest tech companies. It's a, it's a website platform, website building platform, not gonna say the name. So, you know, they get so many, uh, you know, tickets for customer success a day, but, you know, they prioritize based on, you know, what type of task is it? So for example, you know, if somebody's website is crushing, right? Uh, that's more urgent than if somebody just needs like an old invoice, right? Somebody whose website is crushing right now needs help right now. So it becomes more important, right? And more urgent 
uh, and uh, versus somebody who just needs like a copy of an old invoice. So they kind of build, you know, you build a method into how you prioritize even the urgent and important tasks. Um, let's see. Best time to work out. Uh, same, same, you know, Roman, uh, depends on your energy levels throughout the day. I think working out in the morning is best if you have to, but that's a personal preference. Like it doesn't matter. Uh, my day, I have, I'm a father and my day starts at 5.30 or 6 a.m. every day. Um, morning, I think is great. Um, a day's timetable. Uh, Ragu, what, what I would suggest, you know, in any do we have this amazing feature where you can see your tasks and calendar one next to the other. And when you add the tasks, you can also add them to the calendar and you can see them, you know, one next to the other. It's, it's a great way to plan your day. Um, let's see, guys. I'm just going, I'm sorry, like I'm going through the questions to see if there's something that I'm missing. So Thomas, regarding any do, how, what is the best way to prioritize with any do uh, uh, today, tomorrow, next week, or folders, work home? So, you know, for each list that you have, you have in the list, you have today, tomorrow, next week. Um, so you can basically go through the methods that we discussed and prioritize through that. Um, also, you can, you can prioritize using reminders. So that's also a great way. Um, Bex, thanks so much. Uh, so, Bruce, yes, it's it's possible to sync any do tasks with your smart wa smart watch or smart band. Uh, you just download. You know that we have apps for I think every available platform in the world almost. So, look at our downloads page. You're gonna see it. Uh, yes, Roman, any do has an Apple Watch support. Um, surely can can share more information there. Um, mm, let's see. I want to make sure that I'm answering as many questions as I can. Technical questions, you know, surely can help you in the comments. Chris, uh, great feedback. So I can, I can um, you know, I can tease a little bit that we are currently working on a series of blog posts that will drill much deeper into each of these methods. Um, so, you know, watch out for your email. You're going to get them. Uh, uh, so we're going to, you're going to see like a longer post with really straightforward examples. And Chris, you know what? Uh, you have my email. So if you have any questions, send them my way, man. I'll be happy to help. Um, Brooke, regarding the, you know, links you have to do, but struggle to add personal development or pleasure. Again, you are a classic example for, for the must, should, want. Do a mixture. I promise you, you have to mix them up. You have to make sure you're also taking care of yourself. Thank you guys so much for joining in. And again, if you haven't already, this is a great time to grab uh, AnyDo's premium or limited time offer. You can get AnyDo, you can get any uh, AnyDo moment and the plan your day feature, unlimited. You can use it every day. Truly one of the things that changed my life and, and the way I prioritize my day. Um, thank you everybody for joining in. You're gonna get the slides and replay uh to your email in the next uh, day or so and of course you're going to get an invitation for the next webinar as well thank you so much for joining in and i'll see you next month